Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Miguel Quinones uh, at Houston Methodist Hospital and the uh, Methodist Beckett Cardiovascular Haram, Haram Vascular Center. Um, this is part of our Grand Round series where we have been interviewing our uh, guest speakers and today we had the wonderful opportunity and the honor of having uh, Dr. Antonio Goto as our Grand Round speaker. Um, he gave a wonderful talk on the atherosclerosis and lipids from joining the past history of developments to present status and going over to future development. So I encourage all of you to go to our YouTube channel uh, and watch this lecture. Uh, Tony, welcome. Thank and you. Thank you for giving this wonderful talk. And okay. thank you also for being part of our Methodist family today, helping us as part of the, a member of the board of the Research Institute and a member of the board of our journal. So we're delighted to have you with you. Well, thank you. We have a few minutes for interviews. So um, there are, we could spend an hour talking with Dr. Goto about so many things. What I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time talking about a very specific uh, issue, which I think uh, he, he's amazingly capable of giving us uh, some uh, of his comments. And that has to do with the fact that you, your career started in basic research. You moved then towards clinical applications of the science. Uh, then in addition to that, you were chairman of the Department of Medicine here at Baylor for 20 years. And then you moved to New York to be the dean of a medical school. Um, so your career has spanned pretty much every aspect of an academic career. And what I'd like to do is spend some of this time for the viewers that may be young physicians, fellows, residents, or young faculty who are thinking of an academic career because I think you, your words of wisdom on anybody who is in that early phase of development of how to approach uh, their career, whether it is from research point of view, whether it is from basic or clinical or even uh, teaching education would be amazingly powerful because you span the whole gamma of it. Well, thank you very much. I started out as a pre-medical student at Vanderbilt and got into, I got a Rhodes Scholarship and I was studying medicine at Oxford and I really got into basic research because uh, as a result of a summer research project, Sir Hans Krebs and Sir Hans Kornberg invited me to change over and take a doctorate in biochemistry. But I still wanted to pursue medicine and so I, want, I wanted to find an area within medicine where I could do basic research and still translate that into patient care and taking care, dealing with clinical situations. So I chose the cardiovascular area of preventive cardiology, studying lipids, cholesterol, and then managing and applying this to patients who had atherosclerosis and who had at that time considered elevated levels of lipids and lipoproteins. So combining the basic research with the clinical really was, I think, a predecessor of what we now emphasize as translational research. But I would advise young investigators, uh, young physicians who are approaching academic medicine from a research standpoint to get a grounding in a basic discipline before uh, progressing on and spending more time with the clinical alternatives. I hadn't planned to become chairman of medicine, but uh, <laughs> Dr. DeBakey and others, uh, Mr. Ted Bowen, who's head of the hospital, convinced me that this was the right thing to do. and so. It did enable me to expand activities and some of the things that I was learning and, and researching into wider education and intervention opportunities in, in a community sense and uh, involve uh, effective training of young physicians. So a couple of messages that you have given, they are hidden but very powerful. One is um, 
at the time that you got involved in the whole field of uh, linking lipids with heart disease, there was a lot of controversy, a lot of uh, misinformation, people arguing as to whether even cholesterol had any role in heart disease. So you basically went for something that you thought it was exciting and that it needed to be explored. And the message there is, if you are a young faculty or young fellow trying to do research, don't invent the wheel. Hit something that you feel there is a question to be answered, they have some degree of passion and interest, and then concentrate in that area. And that was one important hidden message. Second hidden message you said was you were a researcher, you were an investigator, you, you were not planning to be a chairman of medicine, you were not planning to be a dean at Cornell. These things eventually happened. And the hidden message there is when you're doing your, your work day to day, concentrate on what you're doing that day. Don't think about 10 years from now where you're going to be the head of medicine someplace or whatever. Those things might happen. If they happen, enjoy them and cherish them and take the opportunity to do more things with them. But concentrate on what you're doing. And it's exactly what you did. And then other things happen to follow along the lines which you took opportunity of them. So those are two very hidden messages. Any other words of wisdom do you have? Well, I just make this suggestion. Mentors are very important Mentors are to the young clinician, investigator, clinical investigator, a young physician pursuing academic medicine, find yourself a good mentor. I was fortunate in having some superb mentors. Yes. Hans Krebs, Hans Kornberg, Donald Fredrickson, Michael DeBakey. Uh, and then, as with the Hippocratic Oath tells us that we benefited from the generation of physicians before us, we have an obligation to pass this on to future generations. So when you reach the stage in your career where you become a chairman or a dean, you have to be more interested in the developing of the career of younger people associated with you than, your own. than with your own. And uh, be a good mentor. Amazingly well said. Well, once again, thank you very much, Tony, for being with us today and, and all the wonderful things you have done for uh, Houston, for the Medical Center, for myself for so many years, and all the things that you're going to continue to be doing because we hope to be having you for a long time. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.